My name is Yusuf Öztürk. I am with the San Diego State University. I work uh, with a number of uh, uh, highly skilled researchers and faculty on uh, enabling real-time residential pricing with closed-loop consumers' feedback. So this project has two goals. One is we want to shed the load, a peak load to non-peak hours. So that's one of the goals of this project. The second goal of this project is to encourage the consumer to save energy. And how do we do that? Well, this is only possible if we increase the consumer and uh, the utility interaction and somehow provide uh, the consumer timely information as well as collecting uh, information from the consumer about the energy consumption. So if you look at demand response systems, everybody knows about demand response, so we don't need to really describe it. Uh, demand response systems currently uses time of use rates or real-time pricing. All the studies are based on pretty much uh, one of these two. Now, that pricing doesn't necessarily mean that it's monetary pricing. The pricing can be in uh, carbon emission or any other factors that you can place in. This is a, a graph that I copied from uh, greenzone.co, which basically shows a very typical a peak demand situation where the baseline demand is uh, baseline capacity is highlighted by this uh, green uh, uh, line. And above this is the peak demand, which we want to shift to other uh, areas, other times where the demand is non-peak or the demand is below the baseline power. So what's our objective? What we want to do is we want to balance the energy demand and generation in smart grid electricity market. We want to deploy energy management and dynamic pricing solutions. And uh, uh, in doing so, we want to work with a utility company and we're working with San Diego Gas and Electricity. Uh, we want to use, this is the ultimate goal, we want to use time of use pricing to affect the consumer's energy usage pattern. So we want to uh, somehow change the behavior of the user by uh, imposing higher prices at times of peak demand. Now, why should the consumer be interested in this? Well, a number of reasons. Financial incentives. So if we basically provide financial incentives to the consumer, the consumer will eventually shift its energy consumption to non-peak hours or reduce the energy consumption by choosing more energy efficient uh, utilities or more energy efficient appliances. Improve the energy electricity, electricity system stability. Uh, reduce energy cost, reduce CO2 emission. So one of these will work for uh, a consumer, I assume. This is how our system started. So what we started is in San Diego, all residential uh, houses are uh, equipped with a smart meter. Uh, and smart meters has a Zigbee interface. So initially what we did is we incorporated uh, a Zigbee uh, gateway to our system and through this Zigbee gateway, we uh, collect, started to collect data from consumers on a Google Cloud application. And that application has been passed to a demand forecasting and price estimation utility. And then the price that's estimated, we're using CalISO prices as the baseline pricing for the real-time prices. That price estimation is then pushed to the consumer devices, uh, which encourages the user to uh, save energy or shift energy consumption. Later on, what we did is we uh, changed our approach. We actually employ both of these approaches now. We connected to the Green Button API, which is a software API that's available from San Diego, State, San Diego Gas and Electricity to collect uh, usage data. Now, we get the data from uh, the consumer, uh, you know, residential establishment through the Green Button API, and then we uh, process the data on Amazon on a cloud application that's running on Amazon EC2 cloud, and then again use Caliso prices to uh, to define a real time price, push it to the consumer devices, and uh, measure the effect of uh, the real time pricing that we impose on the consumer. So this is a page that uh, uh, shows basically SDGNE's Green Button API. You can follow this. And that's us. Energy Elastics is, uh, is hopefully is going to be a commercial establishment in the next couple of months. So we're lining up. We do provide the users an, an, an Android app that basically interacts with the utility in a number of ways and uh, provides the consumers uh, useful um, 
hints for saving energy. So uh, now in San Diego, uh, consumers do not have to come to us. They can go to stg &E's website and they, they can register for the Green Button API and connect to our application, which basically starts streaming data to our, our process. And we're starting to get more and more users joining our project. Um, so this is a, you know, a very simplified diagram of what we are doing. We're basically receiving data through the uh, Green Button API. We're receiving other data from uh, weather.com. We're receiving solar radiation data. And then we're pushing all of this to a demand forecasting uh, system. And that demand forecasting system producer can, you know, like estimates the demand for the next three days, hourly demand for the next three days, and then for the uh, following 15 days, uh, daily demand. We pass this to uh, an aggregate price estimation algorithm. We aggregate the demand. We use the day ahead pricing and real time pricing from Caliso to estimate the price. We pass that price to the consumer devices that are connected to our system through a RESTful interface. So this is a bit more of a complex picture of our system now. We do get the data from Green Button API. We use a support vector machine and a PID controller to uh, do forecasting for the next three days uh, for hourly demand. And then the following two weeks, daily demand, and we pass this to an aggregator. The aggregator aggregates the demand from individual houses, and uh, we use a Caliso prices as the baseline price and use price elasticity to determine what the price should be for the energy based on the changes in the demand. And uh, we push it to a consumer device that basically encourages the user to save energy. This is uh, an early effort uh, for uh, determining what the demand is. This is basically, we just started to test our algorithms on forecasting. And uh, this shows uh, for uh, the period for 72 hours between 8 and 10, the aggregate uh, demand and uh, the real demand and the forecasted demand that we computed through the support vector machine. We're using for pricing, we're using day ahead market pricing and real time pricing from the Caliso. Caliso provides both prices and uh, our algorithm uses both of them to determine basically non-peak pricing and the peak pricing that we want to impose on the consumer. We have decided uh, to run a three tier pricing uh, system where at any particular time there are three different tiers of pricing. So if you're consuming energy uh, in the middle tier, you would be sort of, uh, you know, your, your price will be, will be computed different and uh, the price uh, for the higher tier or lower tier would be priced accordingly so that we encourage more people from the higher tier to move their energy consumption to lower tiers. And this is really based on, we compute the middle tier and then we base on the standard deviation we adjust the, uh, the higher and lower tier pricing. So this is a simulated effort where we basically simulated if we uh, change the pricing by an amount X and if the price elasticity is Y, uh, what would be the demand, uh, rescheduled demand, and that shows basically that we wanted to cut off the demand, the peak demand at this point, and we were able to achieve that, shift that demand to non-peak hours. Again, we're using price elasticity, for determining the pricing, assuming that you know, the uh, energy uh, is, is price elastic, which means the, demand, the change in demand will result in the change in price, or changing price will result in change in demand. And that's uh, what we are using for, for estimating the price. It shows, this plot shows the three-tier pricing. Again, the middle tier is computed based on and as you can see, they are basically following each other. The middle tier pricing is based, based on Caliso prices, and uh, the top and bottom tier, or the higher and lower tiers, are based on standard deviations to shift the pricing up and down to encourage people to move away from uh, higher tier pricing. We have, so the customer interaction, this is all about customer interaction. We have an application that is on Google Play Store. If you're living in San Diego, please download our application and uh, go to uh, stg &E's website to uh, join our, our effort. So STSU Smart Energy or Energy Elastics is the application that is uh, served on Google 
a place store now for consumers that are joining our project. So we do a bunch of things in the application. One of the things that we do in the application is we provide hints, we provide information. So this section basically, once you bring it in, there's a slider here that provides information about different things, you know, easy and affordable ways to save energy. So if you click on this, it will push you to a website by energy.com or by, another, by California Energy Commission, somewhere that will provide information. And there's a bunch of these sliders that we can push. There's a system to edit these sliders in the back end so that the, the uh, utility company, if they choose to use our system, which they are using now, uh, they will basically be able to change this. We provide information about the energy consumed within that month, and that's, that's uh, what we are providing. And then we have a bunch of buttons, basically, that the user choose to, to interact with the utility company. Now, this is important. When SDG &E, when a user goes on SDG &E's Green Button API and registers with the system, on that particular day, what happens is SDG &E sends us the last two years of energy consumption for this individual, along with the email of this individual. So now we have, we have a, a, a key for this individual, we have the email of the individual that did sign up, and we have two years of historical data. Now, when, once we receive this, we don't, of course, want to have you know, anybody to ac have access to this data. So what we do is we basically, when the user launches our application, we ask the user to provide his email address, and then we send an email, a key to that email that the user can uh, use for verifying the device that he is going to use. And that's what we do. We basically send an email to this email address that the user provided, provided that this email is, is on our system. And the user verifies and becomes our customer. And from here on, we can provide you information about how much energy you used. Uh, we provide both forecasted energy and uh, real, realized energy consumption on a daily, monthly, yearly basis. And we can provide comparisons. So we do provide comparisons for the time being with uh, between different times, uh, different days that you used energy. But uh, really, we're going to provide information about, about there's, you know, in another section, we're going to provide information about how do you, uh, how do you rate against your, your neighbors. So that if your neighbors are consuming a lot less energy than you are, then you would perhaps consider saving energy or uh, changing some of your appliances or lighting. So we do have these more engineering type plots, okay? So I think this is like the engineering background uh, homeowners, and we provide a bunch of this information. We provide this uh, for the monetary uh, you know, cost. We provide it for uh, the energy consumption in terms of kilowatt hour. And then, and then we do provide, um, as we talk with SDGNE, SDGNE complained that, hey, you know, like there is no real way of communicating with the consumer. So what they wanted to do is, in return, you know, everything that they're doing for us, in return, what they said is, okay, won't you add a, another section uh, which can be used by the consumer to communicate back to us if there is a, something wrong with our system? And that's what we did. We basically added a, a report section where the consumer can take a picture, can mark a location, can add some textual information and ship it back to SDG&E. SDG this information basically goes on our cloud and it's open to SDG&E. So that's one thing that we did for SDG&E that wasn't in our proposal. It just came you know, like as a request and we honored that. This is really the essence of what we wanted to do. So at any particular time, um, Hopefully with smart appliances, this is not going to happen. With smart appliances, you're going to go on an appliance and as you try to click, as you click on the button, you know, the appliance will tell you that, oh, no, 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 don't run me now. Run me after three hours, okay? That's exactly what we want you to do. So now, once you basically, um, that we have an application where you can add a new appliance to your home and then if you click on an appliance and if you hold it, basically it pops up this menu where you can specify what the appliance is. Uh, this is really an XML document that we can supply to every, every uh, device. And then, you know, once you click on an appliance, what you're going to have is you're going to have this screen. On the top, the current time. And during this current time, if you run this appliance, 
what you're seeing here is the real-time pricing that we provided. So the price of the energy, and this is the time now, and this is, if you run the appliance, how much it will cost you. And in return, what we do is we, we offer you this. We say, okay, if you choose to run this appliance at 2151, your cost will only be uh, 16 cents instead of 0 0.21 uh, cents. Now, um, okay, so did the consumer choose our recommendation or not? That was important. So SDGNE wanted to add another button here and said, okay, uh, if the consumer chose your recommendation, we want to know that. So that's why we added this, you know, if they found our suggestion useful or not, and if the user chooses either of these options, we register that information. So we collect basically information about the behavior of the user. Did we change the behavior of the user? Of course, from here, we will know that this user doesn't really care about money, okay? Or cares about money. So I'm hoping, you know, once we have enough number of people, what we are gonna have is we're gonna have a, a way of discovering what's important for this person. And instead of pricing it monetarily, we will price it based on carbon emission or based on other factors that could really uh, mean something to that individual. So that's, that's in line, that's basically in works. We're uh, trying to map the energy pricing during, uh, during uh, peak and non-peak hours to carbon emission and we're gonna provide optional uh, pricing to the individual. Now, uh, we wanted to do another thing, you know, we wanted to basically provide tips. This is something sdg &E also wanted to do. What they wanted to do is they wanted to ship tips to the user. So, you know, uh, running your air conditioner at blah, 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 blah can save this. Now, these tips, they are on their website. But really, there is no way of knowing whether the consumer, how many people have seen this, or whether the consumer found this useful or not. Whether this tip doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything to the consumer. So we wanted to coll collect some information back from the consumer regarding whether this tip was useful for the consumer or not, or not. So if the consumer reads this, and of course, this is again a slider, there is many tips. And if the consumer sees one tip, and chooses that, oh, I found it useful, we don't show the tip to the user anymore. So that's basically a one-time thing. Once you see it and once you say, oh, that's useful, and we're not going to bore you with that tip anymore. So that's there. And then we have, you know, this, this pricing is an interesting thing. When we started on this, I was thinking that, okay, I'm gonna check up the price of energy at times when the peak demand is high, and then I'm gonna lower the energy price at times when the demand is low, and when we talked to stg they said, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't change the price of the energy because it's regulated. So, uh, well, since we can't change the price of the energy, really, what we decided to do is we decided to come up with a game. Those of you who are familiar with Fitbit, Fitbit has a, has a sort of competitive game. You know, like I have friends, they go out at uh, 12 a.m. midnight to walk around so that they walk more than their friends on that particular day. Now I want to do the same thing. So with our application, what you do is you basically invite your friends. So you can invite your friends and we create a little social club for you. And within your social club, we show you how much you saved compared to others if you used our uh, advices. Now this would be based on and then this is again, you know, it's not very creative maybe because we're simply copying what Fitbit did for this particular, you know, uh, activity tracking application to track rather than activity to track energy consumption and uh, to make it more uh, sort of, uh, you know, more attractive to the users uh, in a market where we cannot change the price yet. So that's, that's there the users can go on our application and can basically suggest our application to their friends, invite to their friends, and what, when, once they invite their friends, what we do is we send their friends and, you know, an email, we sort of chase after them, and once they register with our system and we get their data, we put them into the same social club and we provide you information about how much you saved compared to your friends, the people in your social club. And uh, that information is available on the first page. It's one of the sliders. You know, when you open the first application, there's a bunch of sliders. One of these sliders is the comparison of 
your expenses or your uh, energy with other users. So where are we now? Now we have the structure you know, uh, established. We have the system in place, the system is working, and we are getting data. We just need uh, maybe thousands more, okay? We have a limited number of users in our system now. We need to increase the number of users in our system, and we need to create perhaps this ecosystem of game ecosystem uh, which uh, provides, uh, uh, which offers the users monetary or ecological incentives to uh, reduce their energy consumption and also shift their energy consumption to non-peak hours. Thank you. We have time for one or two questions. Just really quick, I, I saw that you shaved, you managed to get that peak to diminish. Do you know what appliance or what people's habit shift was primarily in order to get that decrease? No, you know, we don't have, uh, I mean like when we, when we shifted that, we don't know that. But what we know is when the consumer basically, when we provide the consumer this advice, right, that hey, do not run this advice here and run it after three hours, we will know that the consumer, whether the consumer lied to us or the consumer actually took our advice. Both are possible. The consumer may actually choose and say, oh yeah, I found it useful, so that you know, it's gonna, he's gonna get points, but then we also read the meter. And uh, the meter <coughs> data, not that we're doing it now, that's another analytics that can be done after this, the meter data and the, the data that he provided can basically verify each other. Hi, I'm Belvin Louie. Um, I noticed that the source of your data is the green button, which means that the data you're getting is 24 hours late. There's a latency. And you shifted that from your original strategy of getting the information directly from the meter, which is pretty near root time. If you're comparing near root time usage consumption data or root time pricing data, it seems like your whole application would be totally shifted or different. Because right now you're basing all of your application on historical usage patterns and you know, scheduled projections of what type of usage I'm willing to pay at uh, what, how much usage I'm willing to use at whatever price point. Did you or can you see any distinction between your applications in terms of how it would be built if it was built using real time data versus historical data? and the customer's uh, reaction, how would they change their response if it was based on real time so, data? The very, very good question. And I, I knew this question would be asked. So that's why what we did is the very first thing we did as soon as our project was funded, we did go out and we bought a bunch of these Zigbee gateways and placed in a number of houses to start collecting real time data. We have real time data, I think uh, for, uh, for five months or so, uh, but we have green button data that goes far beyond. Well, and one of the, about the relationship exactly that's the what I'm exactly that's what I'm coming. <coughs> exactly that's where I'm coming. So what we are doing now is we're basically analyzing the uh, the same algorithms based on the real time data and uh, the data that we receive, you know, they, from a green button API. So the success of the green button API depends on its delay. But uh, the, the success depends basically how good our prediction, our forecasting is into the future. So with the real-time data, we're, you know, we're gonna, soon we're gonna basically be able to compare the efficiency of real-time data versus the uh, green button data, which is, you know, which is not only 24 hours late, but also uh, you know, with a granularity of one hour. Oh, thank you. 